Okay, so we're now on the API test form. We'll run that same example again where we can list all hosts and I'll show you how to do that using this. Well, first I can just log in. So I already have mine set correctly. You'll need to update to your settings. There we go. It's just run in the background, the equivalent of this curl script, but actually in JavaScript. And it's given me an authentication token down here. And the authentication token is pre-filled in the next section where I can actually call a method. And I will call the same example from the last page, which was to list all hosts. So host.get, we'll copy host.get. And I'll use that in the method. Note that when I make changes to these fields, you get a little bit of, it's rewriting the curl script for us down there. So we can just copy and paste that if we want to. And the parameters here, just be careful just to copy just that section here from bracket to bracket. Okay, so I'll copy that. And that's my parameters. And there we go. It's written a curl script for us. Now we can copy that curl script into our SSH like so. And we'll get a response. Or we can just press it here and we get the response in the web interface. And that's much easier to read, I think. But you can see it's the same thing. Okay, so what it's doing here is the result is giving us a host ID, a host. If I look here, output, host ID and host. And also to dig down further into interfaces, interface ID and IP. So select interfaces, interface ID and IP. Now, I want to see all information, not just the values that I've explicitly set. So rather than having the array there, I can just type extend. And I'll just get rid of this second line like so. And we'll see it's rewritten the curl script for us. So parameters, output, extend. And if I run that, it will now give me all the information on all the hosts, which is quite a lot. And let's just say I only wanted to see proxy host ID and status. I could say, I can get rid of that and I can put in the array characters and I'll copy this one, host ID, comma, status, status. Okay, so it will now just give me proxy host ID and status. There we go, host ID, proxy, status. So this is our new curl here, output, proxy, host ID, status. So that was the equivalent of listing all hosts using the tool. So the tool is going to be make your life a little bit easier for you. Probably you don't have to use that tool. You can use other tools like Postman or other API testing tools. Just go to your search engine and type in API testing tool and you'll get a lot of options. Postman is the most famous. Okay, so let's look what else you can do with the API. We can create an item. And this is the data and the method here, item.create and some parameters. This will be the parameters section that we'll copy. So, and here's a, an example curl that we could use. But I'll just put this into the testing form. So I want item.create. Okay, so my method is my valid token is item.create. My parameters here. There we go. We'll create, we're going to create a new item with the key being VFS. I'm sure was here free with a few extra things. And there's the example curl. We can run that curl directly or we can just press get method JSON. There we go. It's now created a new item for us on my server. And that's the item ID 33250. Let's go to Zabbix server and have a look at that. Actually, just one of the important things here was I've told it which host ID to use, and that was host ID 10084, which 
just happens to be the host ID of your Zabbix server. In the previous example I showed you where I listed all hosts, that will give you the host ID if you wanted to add an item to a different host. So let's go into Zabbix. And if I go to configuration hosts to my Zabbix server and look at items, if I scroll down, there we go, it's a new item, free disk space on home, Sean was here. It's not supported, it doesn't matter, it's just an example. That's the key there. Now we can also modify that through the API. So that's using item update. So I'll just copy item update. And we have different parameters, it's much simpler. We have to tell it which ID. Okay, so if I go back here, my using item.update, my parameters will need to be different. So what I'll do is I'll just copy these parameters, put that in there. And the item ID is actually this one down here, 33250. So I'll replace that. And I'm going to rename it to Sean was here too, like that. So if I execute that, it's that's okay. It's a good response. Three three two fifty. If I go back to Zabbix and I refresh this and scroll down, free disk space on home Sean was here underscore two. There we go. That was updated. Now another thing. If we look at the the bottom of the screen down here, we see the little URL being highlighted. See, it says host ID 10084 and item ID 33250. That's how you can, that's another way you can see which host IDs and item IDs you want. Okay, so we've just updated that. Now we can also delete that. So that's what we'll do now. So that will just be item delete. And all we need for item delete is just the ID of the item. And there we go, item dot delete parameters item ID 33250. Let's call that method and that was a good response. Refresh that for Zabbix server. That item is no longer there. It's no longer there. So yeah, the API can do all those things. Other thing you might want to do is view all triggers. So that method is trigger.get. Okay, trigger.get. It's updated my curl script. The parameters are this section here, curly brace to curly brace. Let's replace all of that. Give me a new curl. I can call that. And here we go, here's a list of all my triggers that are in the problem state. Now each of these little quick examples I'm showing you, the best place for documentation on all of these things is the Zabbix documentation. So, and we've got host create, delete, get, and we've done host.get and these are many of the options that we've got. Host IDs, well, many things. And here are some examples down here, which are very similar to what I've been showing you. But there is a lot more examples. And we've also quickly looked at item. Yeah, we quickly used item. We, we used all of these. Create, delete, get an update. Trigger there. There we go, trigger. All the trigger methods. Also, when you authenticate a user and you get the token, Depending on how your user is configured, that session will never expire. So it's always important to log the user out. And here's a there's a method for that, user logout, and it requires the authentication token. So we can just try that out. So user logout. Um, my valid user, user logout. And for the parameters, I don't need anything other than just have it, something like that, just an empty object. There we go, and the user has now logged out. Now if I was to try any methods using this token, they would fail, such as user get uh, session terminated. Re-login please. Very good.